Great. So, um, sorry about that. Uh, so I'm from the Advanced Technologies team in the Perceptual Computing Department at Intel. And I'm going to talk about uh, Intel RealSense and our uh, robotics innovation program. So I'm um, going to give a um, short introduction about what is Intel RealSense actually. Uh, I guess not everyone knows what it is. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about our innovation program, robotics innovation program, what it is, uh, what is our goal, and how we're planning to achieve it. Following by summary and hopefully some questions. So Intel RealSense technology, what it is. Um, so where it Intel probably have best sensor out there, your um, right processor out there. You know, I guess most people here using the processors for in their laptops, in their researchers. And we wanted to create this kind of new interaction, this immersive, intuitive, and natural interaction with our computing devices. It can be a desktop, laptop, tablets, and well, smartphone, and other stuff. And in order to do that, we wanted to add sensors to this brain that we are developing. Um, so we need to be able to perceive the environment of the computing device. Uh, so we created, uh, developed uh, two depth sensors. Actually, I have them over here. So they are extremely small and light, and they uh, have just a USB connection, USB 3 connection. And one of them is a short range, and it's, uh, I didn't say, but they were developed to be, be able to integrate into our ultrabooks in the tablets smartphone, etc. So they were small, low power, low cost. Um, this is, was our aim. So we have those two um, sensors. One is the short range sensor for short range interaction uh, in front of the computer, uh, gesture recognition, uh, finger tracking, facial um, recognition, all kind of stuff like that. Um, second sensor, the long range sensor, is for well, long range interaction. It goes up to three and a half meters indoor, and it is for scanning and uh, environment understanding and etc. So, I, I'll show you some. Well, before that, actually, um, we said that uh, we want to create this in, uh, immersive uh, interactions. So we also provide an SDK, and the SDK comes with a set of capabilities. Uh, it's everything I said before: gesture recognition and uh, facial recognition and stuff like that. So application developers will be able to develop their application and to focus on their application and not developing computer vision models. And what I'm going to show you now is kind of a, a video of kind of um, applications we are imagining inside Intel. Our world isn't one or two dimensional. It's three dimensional. And with the integration of true 3D-capable cameras across a range of Intel computing platforms, so is your computing experience, giving you the power to capture and share your world. Extend your reach. Express yourself in new ways. Create something dramatic. How do I slice this pepper? Learn something entirely new. Send it to me. Connect. How about this? And collaborate. Full 3D computing is here today, connecting you with what matters most in ways you this never imagined. And this one is purple. My all you have to do. Color. That's all for now. There's more to come. This is just the beginning. Is look inside. So this is just the beginning. Um, so obviously, what, why is this the beginning? Why we're thinking that what we saw here is just the beginning? Um, it's because we started with these user-facing technologies that we can actually interact with the computer and gesture recognition, etc. And it's already very exciting. Um, we moved to this world-facing interaction, scanning, and etc. that you saw in the uh, in the video, um, which is, was kind of uh, the next phase of that. Um, we are looking at multi-user interactions between users using our devices, uh, but. 
the actual future is what kind of we are calling dynamic social interaction. The devices shouldn't be in our way. We should be able to interact with people, with the environment, uh, kind of the ubiquitous computing uh, concept. Moving from human-computer interaction to human-world interaction. And this is why uh, wearables, IoT, and robots, obviously, are kind of the ultimate platform to use our technology. And this is why we created this robotic innovation program. In our team, um, uh, we are trying to develop, um, we want to create these rapid cycles of innovation uh, in the robotic world, and we try to kind of develop technology to encourage that. Um, we are not robotics experts. Um, what we want to do is to enable you, everyone here, to create innovation and to create the next big thing in robotics thanks to, well, our real sense camera and technology. Um, so we kind of did the research a bit and looked around and we kind of find out that ROS is probably the best platform for that. There is a lot of uh, ecosystem, developer, researchers, and uh, there is this abstraction layer uh, that is extremely important because we can already tap in existing um, uh, capabilities and applications and when we thought that this is going to be really nice using our technology. So we started like a year ago. Uh, in April 15, we started a pilot program with some selected universities. Uh, we gathered feedback and requirements, really tried to understand what you guys need. And then, and then the requests started to come along. We got a lot of tractions from PhD students, from research facilities, from companies. Um, people wanted our sensors, our software, and after some internal discussions, we uh, decided to um, make our offering available for the old Rose community uh, following our CEO announcement in the last August in the IDF, the Intel Development Forum. And it is already available. It is an experimental code. We're still developing it, uh, and we are going to um, add more features and to fix uh, what we need. Uh, but it's already available. You can already go on, download it, and use it in your uh, developments. Uh, so what we're actually uh, providing. So obviously, some of the um, camera access, so the RGB data, the depth data, uh, IR, point cloud, uh, we're planning to provide some basic computer vision models, like uh, plane analysis, uh, blob detections, and some advanced models if you are more interested in creating this human robot interaction, so person detection, skeleton, uh, gesture, object recognition. Um, you can all decide what you want to use out of this package. Um, so the current set, I'm going to show you some of the stuff. We are developing it. It's under development, but uh, uh, I thought it would be interesting to share with you. So what we have, this is the setup. We have kind of a turtle bot, and we have a little sensor over there, just mounted. And uh, one of the tools we are developing is what we call a depth enhancement. It's basically a set of filters that uh, you, you can run on the depth data, and we can uh, see live how the depth data image uh, changes, how the point cloud changes. Um, what's nice about that, you can also develop your own filters and add it to this tool and uh, basically see how they, what is the best configuration for your development. Another thing is, well, as we said, ROS has this abstraction layer, and we can use existing technologies and existing um, capabilities that people here developed or are open source. So here you can see uh, our sensor mounted the same robot and using Octomap to 3D scan our lab. Um, and we're also 3D mapping it using uh, the G mapping. So this is something which is you can just plug in and some adaptation remapping, and you have it out of the box. So it's something really nice. And this is what we wanted to use. This is why we wanted to use ROS. Um, so after we have a map, we can also obviously um, move and around. We're using the autonomous map. navigation of ROS and with our sensor. So with the you can see um, the, the now turtle bot base with our laptop, and the there map. is uh, the, robot uh, the map here. Navigate there. And uh, we are basically giving a 2D uh, navigation goal, and our little robot is, is going. And thanks to our 3D sensor, uh, well, there are some obstacles around here in our cubicle area, so it recalculates the route. 
and he managed to pass, even though there is quite interesting path he decided to go through. And he doesn't manage that well because, there, well, he's using the bumper sensors there. And eventually, actually, he does manage to go, so this is quite nice, and uh, it is kind of a narrow uh, place to go through. And again, we just adapted uh, our sensor to ROS, and we get all kind of uh, cool capabilities out of the box. We will now set a navigation goal to the end. All right. Um, next is uh, person tracking. It's, we are, it's under development. It's very, very early, but it's some stuff that uh, uh, you will see in the future. Uh, here we're trying to de detect the, uh, the gestures, not actually the person, the gestures, the user of pointing uh, where the robot should go to. So it's just kind of uh, some um, kind of research we're doing in uh, our lab, how it is the best way to do it. But these kind of things you'll be able to see uh, and in our models, uh, in our package in the future. Um, another, another thing which is, uh, I think, very interesting for most of the people here is that our sensor, the long-range sensor, works also outside. It has some noise, but it works. It works inside and outside, and you get some good obstacle uh, uh, identification. And this is in full sunlight mode. You can see it's, uh, it was very hot this day. And, uh, and we can, I mean, we have some partners who are saying that they get up to 10 meters of uh, information outside. So this is, uh, I think it's quite useful because it works also inside and outside. Um, last, I wanted to show some um, work of um, universities actually here in, in, uh, here in uh, Germany. Um, the top one is using our short range camera. Um, the um, bottom one is using long range camera. Both of them are using, uh, that's great. All right. Bad connections. All right. So both of them are doing kind of a scanning. The, um, uh, the bottom one uh, from Technical University of Milhen is doing uh, 3D scanning of their lab, and they, they're using uh, an open source uh, um, algorithm. The top one is uh, 3D scanning some objects. Um, so this is very exciting because, again, uh, it was uh, possible to be done just because it was available on the ROS and people can take it and do stuff with it. Um, actually, the top one is Patrick. He's here somewhere. And he's even 3D, 3D printed himself. Uh, so I guess to give, him, to give it to his mom or something to know. <laughs> Uh, it's really, really exciting to see already some people taking the, taking the sensor, taking the, um, yeah, <laughs> taking the technology and creating something awesome out of that. So just a summary. From what we saw, there is a huge pool. There is a real need. Also, we talked with OSRF, and there is a real need in the robotics community for those kind of sensors. And we think there is a really competitive advantage because of the size, of the, the low cost, of the low weight, and et cetera. And um, we're hoping that actually you guys can take these kind of things and create uh, your innovation. Tell us what you need because we're still understanding and we still want to uh, make something that is good uh, for you. So this is why it's just the beginning. <laughs> OK, the question was uh, low cost, can I give an indication? Uh, so yes, it is available for pre-order um, in the... So the short range is available to order already. It's a developer platform. I think it's $100, right? Yeah, $100. And um, the same is for the long range sensor as a developer, um, as a developer uh, kit. The model is $65. All right. <laughs> okay. How many camera sensors does the real sense support yes. in parallel? It supports, sorry? So, uh, so how, how many cameras it supports? It supports, we have two cameras, actually. All right, so as I said, those two cameras are the real sense cameras. Um, you can connect the long range camera 
Uh, you can connect uh, many of those. We tried, uh, I think one of our partners tried to connect, I think 10 it was in parallel and it worked quite good. There is no interference because of the technology, so you can even like, connect, like look at the same thing. Um, so yeah, so we can connect several of them, 10 of them, and those are the cameras.